Hey, this is Warren Redlick. We're going to do a different video today. I have a friend named John. John is homeless. He's economically challenged. He has a lot of problems in our society. And I take him to lunch about once a month. Uh, he chooses the Burger King you're going to see in this video. I would take him wherever he wanted to go, but this is the place he likes to go. It's on his bus stop and it's convenient for him and he's happy there. I interviewed John, talked to him about self-driving cars and how they might affect his life, which I think most of us, if you're watching my YouTube channel, you're probably able to afford your own car. You're probably not living a challenge, economically challenged life the way John is. So hearing how he sees self-driving cars might be interesting. I also talked to him about how COVID-19 is affecting people struggling economically. I talked to him about some other issues. I thought this might be interesting. Um, he doesn't answer questions necessarily the way I might like. And sometimes he goes off on tangents, so you're going to see this video was edited. But I still hope you find this insightful. I've taken a shot at this, and I want to see how the video does. I personally think John can be a really interesting guy. Uh, you may not feel the same way, but I hope you'll give it a shot. See what you think of him. See what you think of his thoughts. And in particular, try to get a perspective on what life is like for people who are economically challenged, who are living more difficult circumstances than you or I might live. And see what you think and see if this gives you any insight into how self-driving cars, how the technology we're changing might be able to make lives better for people who are in different shoes than ours or how they might not help that much. And what else is going on in their lives and what can we learn from them? So here we go. This is my friend, John. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I'm here with my friend, John. We are in Boca Raton, Florida, and we're going to talk about self-driving cars and other things. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm interested in your perspective on self-driving cars. John, for those who don't know, uh, lives a more challenging life than the life I live and that most of us live. Uh, John occasionally rides public buses. John rides his bicycle a lot, doesn't own his own car. And I envision a world in which self-driving cars provide transportation at a much lower cost than the current options that we have. So when you ride public buses, John, does it cost you anything? Do you get a free pass? How does that work for you? Pre-COVID, people were uh, economically limited in theory can uh, acquire what, at least uh, in Palm Beach County, a transportation disadvantage bus pass uh, for uh, 15 or $20. So it would cost you something. Yes, you're required to, 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 to buy it, even though you have zero income. Um, it's, that's one of the catch-22s of the, the whole system. Palm Beach County is larger than the states of, say, Delaware or Rhode Island in land area. And you also spend a lot of time in Broward County. Yes, which is a totally different bus system, totally different pass system. So do you need a pass for each one, or is the pass in one? You, good you are required to buy passes in, in both jurisdictions, and a, a, another pass for, say, the, the tri-rail system, which runs between the two. Oh, that's a different pass as well. That's right. So between uh, the, the cost of all those passes, uh, using the standard rates, uh, not the transportation disadvantage rate, no, even uh, if you have the transportation disadvantage rate in, say, Palm Beach County, but not the other jurisdictions, you basically end up, uh, it, it costs you more to ride public transportation than it does to ride uh, your own inexpensive uh, motor vehicle. Okay, well let's go, what I see in today's world is you have the option of riding Uber or Lyft, which averages about $2 a mile. We're headed towards a world soon, I think, where you'll be able to ride in a self-driving robo-taxi for a dollar a mile and then going further down the road as robo-taxis get better and as they become more efficient, we may get to 50 cents a mile or less. In other words, it would cost a lot less. And could you comment on the convenience of, imagine being able to say, tell your phone, send me a ride, and it comes and picks you up right where you are and takes you right where you wanna go versus the convenience or inconvenience of the public bus and train systems? Yeah, the, the, logistically, the, the public you know, transit systems in, in these two counties in particular, the amount of time that it takes you to commute distances is extremely long. Just as an example, 
Well, right. like you came here today. Hmm? You came here today. We met. Yeah. I drove in my car about 20 minutes to get here. This is, um, we're on Federal Highway in Boca Raton, Florida. You came on a bus up from Broward? Yeah. Was, did that bus up from Broward come all the way here? Or did you have to change buses? I, I rode a single bus. How long did it take you? Including waiting for the, uh, for the bus. Yeah. And, and biking over to the bus station, about two and a half hours. Okay, and total it's about 30 or 40 miles? Yeah, about that. Okay. Um, so could you imagine a world where you hop in a, you press an app on your phone, a car comes and picks you up with no one in it, takes you here in 30 minutes, costs you 15 bucks? Or was that? I am generally okay with that, assuming that you have a um, the cash flow to afford the fifteen dollars. Which, well, that, that's that's a problem. Right? Even fifteen dollars is a lot for you. That's a problem for the uh, the majority of, of Americans if if you stop and think about it. You and I live in two different worlds. Right? In my world, the average person owns their own car, and it costs them, according to the IRS, around sixty cents a mile. Mm -hmm. So, having a robo taxi pick me up at fifty cents a mile means. It makes more sense for me to ride robo taxis than own my own car. Yep. But I'm, I wanted to talk to you because, for this interview, because I'm interested in not how it affects people like me, but you live in very different economic circumstances. So the idea of having to pay fifteen dollars for that ride would probably be prohibitive compared to what you're paying now for those passes. Yes, because you're riding the bus a couple times a week. Oh, uh, lately I haven't been riding it at all. Okay. I've been commuting to, uh, by foot and by bicycle. Uh, what were you saying during COVID? Are the passes free? Uh, in Broward County, the, the bus system, uh, they waived the, the fees on the buses. Okay. But I've been avoiding that because of uh, the uh, potential for infection. I've been trying to reduce my, my exposure in that regard. Um, I'm a former healthcare worker who survived a worldwide viral epidemic. Yeah. Which one? The HIV epidemic. Oh, wait, let's talk, let's talk about something, though. You mentioned the, the cleanliness, essentially. That if you're riding the public bus system, you feel there's a risk of infection, right? Yes. Would you feel safer in a self-driving car if you're the only person in it? And they have some kind of practice for cleaning it after a passenger gets out, or you can clean it? Would that be safer? In, in, in theory, if, if they had that, that means of, of sanitizing it, between passengers. For example, if I recall correctly, I think it was in Japan and, and maybe Europe, uh, um, they had public restrooms, which after the, the individual would use that, it would seal itself physically, and it would literally steam clean. Uh, it, it was like an autoclave um, in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Or as far as sterilizing uh, surgical instruments, for example. Yeah. But it was basically doing this to the entire restroom. Right. Well, you can see that with a self-driving car. And here in Florida, they just park it with the windows closed. It's going to get hot. But, you know, you could turn the heat on, heat the car up to 120 degrees for a few minutes. Well, I mean, it, it, literally, the steam would be up to 100 degrees centigrade or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. So then the, the problem after they, they evacuate the, the steam... It would have to uh, the, the cool it down. That would require a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, air conditioning load, and and the, so the energy empowering the the this steam sanitizing method, and uh, and or even a UV light sanitizing method, then recooling it, the energy cost would, would require uh, battery banks. That are just monstrously okay, heavy but, and expensive. But a modern Tesla Model Y, let's say, has a very efficient heating and cooling system and could certainly heat the car up to somewhere over 100 degrees for a few minutes, roll down the windows after, let it air out. It would be safer than being in a bus. I mean, our I'm goal, not, our I, goal I, isn't perfect. I'm not disagreeing with you. Let's be clear. We're not talking about perfect sterilization. We're talking about safer. Uh, relative, yeah. Um, okay, so... Um, so but, but the, my fantasy of self-driving cars that cost 50 cents a mile or even 25 cents a mile might still be too expensive for you, right? For many Americans, yes. Because there are many Americans who are, are, are making, you know, say a working class income. Um, 
15 bucks doesn't sound like a lot uh, to a self a middle class or wealthy right. person. Me. Yeah. Oh. But to the majority of Americans yeah. who fit that demographic profile yeah. and who, quite frankly, I uh, am convinced that many of these surveys underreport. Yeah. Um, not deliberately, but just. But let me counter Most you. Most of these people, you know, it's like, how, how are you going to reach them? Let me I mean, counter you for a second, though. You mentioned working class people. If you're talking about people who have jobs and own a car, then not having to own a car might save them money versus versus paying for robo taxi rides when they need them. Because, because the car insurance and the cost of ownership and the financing and all that adds up and typically cost people about 60 cents a mile. So if you're able to do robo taxis for 50 cents a mile or less, it would save those people money. So I'm not so much worried about the working class people who have cars. I'm talking about people like yourself who don't have a job, who have challenge, challenges finding housing and don't have an easy flow of cash, right? There's a, there's a population that most of us don't see and you see it a lot. Yeah. Of people who don't have ready housing, people who don't own their own cars, people who don't have a steady check coming in. And that's well, your world, the, right? As the economy has shifted more towards uh, independent subcontractors, quote unquote, gig workers and the like, hmm. or even if you've got a quote unquote steady job, let's say uh, uh, people who work in the food service business as, as waiters or waitresses or, you know, food service prep or, or, or the like. Um, they, they have a problem, not only the 50 cents per mile would be a good thing, well, to the 60 cents per mile. I don't, I don't, I'm not disputing that. What I'm saying is that they also have a cash flow problem. All right? Yep. So in, in many respects, I agree with you that having access to an autonomous taxi service yeah. would, would, would be a potentially good thing, and especially because it would be much more flexible scheduling-wise relative to the current public transportation system in virtually all of America. Mm -hmm. uh, which, as I was describing, it, it, I mean, it, it took me two and a half hours riding one bus. Yeah, and if you had to change buses. And I, I, I used to own a home in, in, in Highland Beach, Florida, a wealthy area yeah. in, in the island. Near, you had a condo near, over near there, I remember that. Yeah, and I also owned um, farm and ranch land over on uh, the west coast of Florida. Yeah. I could literally drive at slow speeds. In less than two and a half hours. In less than two and a half hours. Oh, yeah, you're talking about going across Alligator Alley, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or even before. Well, he's talking about going. He's just to be clear. He's talking about going to Naples, Florida, from from the east coast of Florida, the west coast of Florida, essentially, which is more than a hundred miles, I think. So uh, imagine if, if 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 to go to work, yeah, you had to uh, in effect drive your car from from the east coast of Florida to the, to the west coast of Florida. You know how many employers are. are, are and or employees are, are going to uh, do that sustainably over, over the long term. Well, people don't really do that. People, yeah. Most people don't drive that far for work most, unless, most, they're, yeah. unless they're in Los Angeles. Yeah. So yeah. let me ask you about something else. I want to turn to the current situation where we have this virus going on, COVID. The COVID economy. Well, no, but I mean, you live in challenging circumstances. So I live in... in by anybody's, by most people's standards, very comfortable circumstances. And many of people where I live feel that this has been quite a challenge. Not being able to go out to restaurants, not being able to go to their choice, their, the place where they normally work, or not being able to run their business. A lot of different ways it's impacted mm -hmm. people. But I'm curious how it's impacted people, who are, not just yourself, but people who are living in more difficult situations. Um, I know you live in a challenging housing situation. Do you think the virus has made it worse, or is, it, is that the I know there's been some changes. Is that have the changes, the things that have made it worse, are they any relation to the virus? Is it just that's the way things go? Are you seeing other people? Because I, you see people who live in difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. Not just you know, it's not just you. Are you seeing how this virus is impacting homeless people, people who are unemployed, people who, who were unemployed before? I should mention. Can can you describe how you're seeing that? Right. But what but what, do you, what impacts are you seeing? It's made things much worse, and if you objectively do a little research on the, uh, the economic circumstances, which I actually have, 
Um, the ma majority opinion amongst economists, uh, for example, are that this is depression level. Yeah. All right. And okay, but I don't want to hear what economists. What are you seeing? What are, what are you experiencing personally? What are other? What are you seeing that other people are experiencing? How is it affecting people at the, the many, bottom of the food many, chain in many our society? Many more people are, are, are unemployed. I mean, do, do, you being to, counted. do you go to places where you get free food, that where they give free food out I've to poor done, people? I've done that. Are, and, and you've done that before this happened? Mm hmm Are the lines longer? Is the what they're serving different? Are you seeing changes in, in food supply? What, what, other, what kinds of things are you seeing? The, the lines are, are definitely longer depending on, on type of service. But the other side of the coin is many people who are not, who don't fit the stereotypical homeless category yeah um they, they avoid homeless or you know um uh, or the like uh public and, and private sector service providers all right um either they don't know about, that it exists or if they know that it exists that they, they don't want to deal with the problems there are multiple problems the other side of the coin is, I mean, this is true even beforehand. For example, in Boca Raton, Florida, at the uh, Boca Helping Hands uh, 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 facility. Not, not just Boca Helping Hands. What are you seeing in terms of people having difficulty? People having, having difficulty. Are you seeing longer lines there? Are you seeing, there are homeless shelters. I don't think you go to homeless shelters, but is it your impression the homeless shelters are more crowded? What? Not, not the, the homeless shelter so much as, for example, soup kitchens and the like. Yeah. Um, some of them are over, uh, have seen a, a huge increase. Food pantries, for example. Do you feel like people, others, are, others, like people, are, people are still avoiding it like the plague? Mm -hmm. All right. Literally. Yes. Do you feel literally like literally and figuratively? Do you feel like people are more stressed because of this? Oh, definitely. And can you describe how you're seeing that? What, what, what are you noticing? Not, again, I'm not asking about you personally. I'm asking, I know you see a lot of people. What are you seeing in those people? I see that there, there's, there's a higher level of what's called social uh, interaction stress amongst people. Something I want to ask you about. You volunteer at a bike charity, right? You're, you're skilled at working on bicycles. Uh, you, I, I work on bikes. You I, told me it before, and I want to confirm this there's more demand for and you're like basically you're fixing up you know bikes and, and, and donating to people or charging them less money for them what are you seeing in terms of people trying to get bikes today bicycle demand has increased um, for, uh, for discussion purposes exponentially um, it's the, uh, the most demand that I've seen since like the 1970s bike boom and you think, I mean, why, why do you think that is? Huh? Why do you think that is? What are, are people saying why they're coming to get a bicycle? There are a lot of people who are doing so because they can't afford transportation otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, then there are other folks who, who have financial resources, but they're doing so because there are other um, opportunities to do things have declined. An example, the gym's closed. So all the people who would drive in, in their luxury car over to the, the, the gym, um, and they'd park their Range Rover, Mercedes, or Maserati, or whatever, and ride a stationary bike indoors in the air conditioning while watching the idiot box, um, they're now locked out of the gym, yeah. at least in theory. I've seen so much exceptions to that, but yeah. Uh, so, in order to to feed their, <laughs> I call it the endorphin high. Um, they then started showing up at the bike the, the shop, and it's it's like I've got all these people who haven't ridden bikes in literally decades, all right? Super athletic people, um, and now they're buying the first bike, and they don't know the first thing about a bike. All right. Yeah. And, you know, there. Um, so there's that uh, uh, that demand. Then there's other de demand from people who it's like this is the only thing they can do with their family now. 
Then there are other families that have gone out and it's like, I've got my kids at home because they shut down the schools, yeah. all right? And they're ricocheting off the walls, so I'm buying them bicycles so they can ride around the block. Yeah. Like when, quote unquote, we were kids. Yeah. All right? And so well, let's do something else. You rode the bus here today. You've met me here before having ridden that bus. Did you notice anything different about your bus ride today as compared to previous bus rides? Was the bus more crowded, less crowded? Less Were crowded. there more people getting on and off? It was less crowded. Do so you think people are afraid to ride the bus because of the virus or just less people out because businesses are closed or you're not sure? Uh, many people are avoiding uh, buses and, and planes uh, because of, of their fear of... of Contracting a, a respiratory illness. There's a, a, a before and after the COVID uh, issue. There's a large percentage of the population that they're they're so poor. That's all they can do is ride the bus. Yeah. I mean that ends up serving as their their housing. Many of them are still on. Okay. Uh, for good or ill, uh, as the case may be. Let me ask you about this. Governor Cuomo made some reference to homeless people on the subways saying, I don't know if he said they were disgusting or it was disgusting, but I don't, I don't know if you're aware, the Governor Cuomo was the governor of New York. Oh, yeah. I'm, and he made I'm some aware. offhand comment about seeing pictures of homeless people on the subways and that Probably was Probably sleeping or the like. Right. Well, but they're, you know, basically, like you said, using it for housing. And now we have so-called essential workers who need to use the subway to get to work and they've got to be on the bus on the subway with homeless people on the subway when he I don't, were you aware he made this remark about it being disgusting yes what did what did you think of that i mean did you feel like he was talking about you not directly you obviously but people in your situation i think he was talking about the stereotypical homeless or poor person. There are a lot of people who are doing that who live in homes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what, do you but, think, what do you think about the stereotype of homeless people? What is it and what do you think it's accurate? Oh, the, the, the uh, mentally defective uh, uh, person who uh, has a criminal record, a substance abuse record, and or uh, some other sort of psychiatric record. But let's talk about, let's talk about the, the stereotype of homeless people. What do you think the stereotype of homeless people is and how accurate is it? I think the, the, the stereotype is uh, that they are all uh, mentally defective uh, and or physically defective. And or criminal. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Drug addicts. Yeah. Or alcoholics. Yeah. yeah. And yes, there are people like that oh. who fit that description, but then there are also people like that who fit the, the, the description of white collar criminal. Yeah. Well, the other side of it is, because John and I have talked a lot about his life, um, you do encounter some of those people who do fit the stereotype, and it's a problem oh, for yeah. you. It's a problem for law-abiding, decent homeless people that there are unfortunately too many of the not law-abiding, not decent people in the same community, right? They get uh, the, the honest good guys, for lack of a better no, yeah. uh, popular phrase, they get caught in, in a crossfire. Yeah. All right. On one hand, they've got they got to deal with the bad guys. Yeah. Not only the, 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 the lower class bad guys, but the middle class bad guys and the upper class bad right. guys. Then they've got the lower, middle, and upper class, quote unquote, good guys or authorities right. who automatically uh, jump to the conclusion that uh, they're, they're one of the bad guys. Right. All right. So um, and it becomes even uh, more complicated and worse if uh, that individual happens to be a foreign-born person. Right. Would be a U.S. citizen or a non-U.S. citizen. Right. Um, legal and or illegal. Yeah. And so, but I mean, the, the, the quote, bad homeless people or the bad people on the lower end of the spectrum might steal from the good ones. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I mean, 
there they, are, they, they, they do so almost as much as, as the middle class bad guys and the upper class bad right. guys. They just steal less. They're not able to get as much from you because you don't have as much. Yeah. But I mean, just I mean, John and I have talked at times about how he's been mistreated in a variety of ways by a variety of people. Um, and one of them is that he he has had people on the lower end of the spectrum or the middle end of the spectrum steal from him. So, all right. So, I and, don't... And the, and the, mm -hmm. the criminal justice system, for example. Yeah. More often than not, enables that pattern of, of criminal behavior right. over and over and over again and criminal victimization. Right. And the criminals, ironically enough, are treated better than the crime victims. Yeah. And then that's one of the situations that John and I have talked about a couple of times. Someone has stolen something from him and the police... Or attacked me physically. And the police don't investigate thoroughly. They don't arrest the bad guy. Selective enforcement. Um, they don't necessarily disbelieve John. They just don't care enough to address they, the problem. They get paid whether they work hard or they work mm -hmm. easy, is the way yeah. it was you know, explained to me off the record. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Know? Anything else you want to talk about on the on camera? Self-driving cars, the life of a, of a economically challenged person in today's world. Anything else stand out to you? I would say yes in a future installment. Okay. So we'll do this I, again I another that's time. that's the best way to, to, to segue this. Uh, All right. Thank you, John. You're welcome, sir.